in my experience as an AI consultant, I've seen many companies starting abruptly an AI project without setting up milestones or budgeting proper resources. For all of these stories, or the majority of it, the end wasn't positive. There were a bunch of problems that they encountered in their journey. In this video, I want to give you a few tips on how you can set up milestones and budget for proper resources for an AI project. The video is part of a larger series, if you want, where we already covered how you can scope out an AI project. Up until now, we covered step one to four. And as I mentioned, in this video, we'll be focusing on sketching out milestones and budgeting for resources. Now, the first step that you should do to sketch out milestones is to set key metrics. And here, I'm not only talking about machine learning metrics like accuracy, recall, precision, F1 score. Yeah, we that those are important, but they are not the only ones. There are other things that you want to look into. Uh, another type of metric that is important is software metrics. You, at the end of the day, are building a product, a, a complex software system that uses machine learning. But it's important that you know what type of system you want to build. Is it, for example, a sort of real-time system where the latency should be like very, very low. What's the throughput? So how many queries, requests should your system handle at the same time? So these are all important metrics that you should have uh, in mind since day zero of your project, really. Another important type of metrics are business metrics. So here you should think about the, the revenue, for example, of like cost cuts or all of these sorts of business related metrics. Once you've written down key metrics, the next step is that of budgeting for resources. This exercise covers multiple aspects, really. First of all, you want to budget resources for data. So you should ask yourself, say, how much is going to cost me to uh, gather the necessary data? And in this respect, you should think about um, money for uh, gathering, collecting data, money for storing data, money for labeling data, right? Or do you have this data? Can you buy this data? Perhaps like there's a, uh, there's a library with all of this data and you can just buy that. So this is extremely important because at the end of the day, remember that machine learning is all about uh, data. Next aspect that you should cover during budgeting is, of course, personnel. Do you already have machine learning a talent inside your sim? If that's the case, say how many people, how many data scientists, how many machine learning engineers should you um, allocate to the new AI project? If you don't have these people internally, so what can you do? Should you hire new talent or should you perhaps um, help your team getting like a, an expert AI consultant or perhaps just offloading the the sort of development of the system to an AI agency. The last aspect is about software and hardware resources. There may be libraries that you need to license, or perhaps you want to buy GPUs or TPUs. There's also another alternative here, which is that if uh, renting GPUs or TPUs from uh, the likes of Amazon or Google, so these are all things that you should think about beforehand and then a budget for these resources clearly. You've done your budgeting. The next step is coming up with a timeline where you can set a bunch of milestones. Of course, this, each project is going to be slightly different from each other. But in my experience, there are three blocks that more or less remain the same and have more or less the same milestones. And here you have them. So the first phase in your timeline should be dedicated to R&D, research and development. And by the end of this phase, you should have a prototype that works well enough and you're satisfied with that. Then there's the second phase once you have this prototype working, which is that of productization. This is moving from scrappy research and development code to uh, high level production, good code. And by the end of productization, you should have a system that can be deployed and you can trust fully. 
Then in the third phase, you have deployment. So you're ready to deploy the system and start getting feedback from your customers. Now you can think that this timeline is a sort of linear timeline, right? So you have step one that leads into productization that leads into step three or deployment. But in reality, what you have here is a feedback loop. So once you've deployed, you start gathering some feedback and you go back to R&D. So your timeline uh, should comprise multiple iterations. Now, how many iterations should you comprise of this feedback loop? Well, that's difficult to say and it really depends on each uh, project. Different projects are going to need different numbers of iterations. But ideally, you should have in mind this idea of iterating across this three phases time and again so that you start with something simple and you deploy it as soon as possible and then you iterate you make it more complex and hopefully it will do a better job at whatever task you have in mind okay so there's still one aspect to this timeline that i haven't covered or one process and this is a process that should remain there throughout all of these steps as a sort of parallel thing, and that's customer discovery. If you're not familiar with customer discovery, I highly suggest you to check out the work by Steve Blank, who just brought it up. But this is basically getting continuous feedback from your potential users so that you uh, get uh, insights into what customers need, what brings them value, and then you can implement those ideas that feedback directly into your project at any phase. It could be at the R&D phase, during productization, at deployment time. A question that most people have is, how can I guess estimate resources? And of course, timeline or time to allocate to each of the different phases. Well, that's a very difficult exercise. The sort of suggestion that I have here is that if using previous projects you may have worked on as a sort of benchmark. What if you haven't worked on any AI projects before? In that case, I would suggest you to start with a POC or proof of concept. So in this case, rather than starting with the whole project, you only focus on a smaller scale project called a proof of concept. So what's the advantage of a POC? Well, first of all, it reduces risk because you're focusing on a small scale project, you see the result of this project, and then if the result is positive, then you move on to the bigger project, to the full project. Otherwise, you just iterate on your initial hypothesis. The other great point about a POC is that it is time boxed. So you should just devote it, say two months, three months, see how it goes, and then depending on the results, decide whether to move on or just like to, to abort the project or iterate. And then uh, the other thing is that this will, having a POC will make your go-to-market strategy faster because the idea is by the end of the POC to have a system, to have a prototype that uh, even in a scrappy way does a decent enough job for your task. Now that you have this system, you can deploy it and use it with some alpha testers Perhaps your system is not going to scale to hundreds of thousands of users, but you can have a small group of alpha testers or beta testers which can give you valuable um, feedback very quickly, which you can use and implement when you move on to the full project. Let's summarize what we've learned in this video. First of all, you should write down your important metrics. Then you should budget for multiple types of resources like data, personnel, software, libraries. Then you should create a timeline with iterative steps. And preferably, you should start with a POC to reduce risk. If you need any help scoping out your AI project, specifically setting up milestones or setting your budget for the project, uh, you can contact me because this is a service that I offer as, a, as part of my consultancy. If you want more information, you can check out my website or you can just drop me an email or a message on LinkedIn. I hope you found this video useful. If that's the case and you want to have more videos like this, please remember to leave a like and to subscribe to the Sound of AI channel.
that's all for today. I'll see you next time. Cheers for now.